Here we are, another episode, Ghetto Correspondent News Network. I'm your host, Sam Dammit. Brady Thomas TV. We in the building. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, let's get right to it. Um, happy uh, Juneteenth. Juneteenth passed. We didn't get to talk about this. Um, we were kind of a little late, but, you know, still here at the party nonetheless. Um, you know what's crazy is... Up until about three years ago, I had no idea what Juneteenth was. Yeah, yeah, I think everybody, for the lot, not everybody, but a lot of people, for the most part, is you've just been taught Fourth of July, Independence. That was that's what you were right. Talking. And even with um, when it comes to slavery, we were we were taught uh, Abe Lincoln freed the slave, or he signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which is supposed to free or end abolish slavery. But it wasn't until two years later, because he signed that on January 1st, 1863. And yeah. in June 19th, 1865, I guess, is when they started letting the slaves go. Yeah, it finally rolled over. And they just said, all right, bye, nigga. What we did to you was, was fucked up, but we're not going to apologize for it. We know we still no. get reparations, but nah. And we know we fucked you up psychologically, but have a nice life. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. So, 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 with with everything that's going on with um the quote unquote Black Renaissance Revolution, whatever you want to call it, now everybody is speaking about Juneteenth, and it's be become like a, a pretty big thing, which rightfully so it should be, and it should be addressed. But the the big topic at hand is: should Juneteenth be a national paid holiday? It should be. I mean, certain companies uh, did it. Certain companies did pay people and gave them off, like Google. But these are companies that people are already sitting at home. They're not coming back to work till next year anyway. Right. Uh, some major companies did, but at the, it, it should be just like nine eleven. You can make the same argument it should be a national holiday, but because it's so close to a major holiday, like nine eleven is close to Labor Day. Juneteenth right. is only what three weeks or two weeks before Fourth of July, so it's real close. So. That's the only reason I, I would I think it should be, but they they usually don't like putting major holidays too close to each other unless it's like Christmas, New you know, New Year's. Right. That, that they usually don't put two national holidays back to back like that. But there is there what well, there's no real other major holiday in June though, right? No, Pretty- not but I mean it'd be so you're, yeah, you write June, that's, that's June nineteenth, but then you'll have another major one on the fourth. Right. At two, three weeks. Usually they just don't do, they'll come up with some bullshit. Usually they just don't do the holidays like that close together, but it should be a national holiday. Well, Congress, it huh? Should always been. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree so too. But like, it hasn't been, Um, people, a lot of people didn't know about it. And, which is understandable, because like I said, the, if you went to public school, especially in America, it's not like they spoke on that. And if they did, they brushed over it because not too many of us knew about it. And, you know, it's understandable, but now it's become the thing. So the last time Congress has passed um, a national uh, holiday was um, 1983. And that was uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And some states didn't acknowledge it at the time, like Arizona and a few other states. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Even if you did know, if you went to your African American studies program or whatever, you could read the date and it'll tell you, okay, June 19th, 1865. But we just never, we just right. didn't like, we always knew the date. You know, I mean, you could always look at the date, and but we just never, for some reason, we never, because we was programmed Independence, Fourth of July, Independence yeah. Day. So it's really just programming because it was always there. If you knew your history, you always could look and see that specific date. And then no one ever really said, hey, like, why are we not celebrating that instead and we doing this red, white, and blue shit? And we were right. still enslaved when 4th of July was established. You know what's <laughs> funny? Uh, yeah, it, uh, that too. And what was so funny about the whole thing is, so Texas was one of the last states to um, give their slaves freedom, right? Mm-hmm. And there there are several states that recognize it as a holiday. I think all but four states recognize it as a holiday. But in 1980, Texas was the first state to make it a state-paid holiday. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> as crazy as that is, take Texas being the last one to release the slaves, okay. but the first one to be like, yo, uh, take the day off, everybody gets paid. That's the least they could do, yeah. Yeah. Um, Virginia uh, made it a, pay, a paid state holiday. Portland, Oregon made it a paid holiday for city employees. And Governor Cuomo, um, who's the governor of New York, signed an executive order that made it a paid holiday for all state employees. June nineteenth. Yep. Okay. And this and that and that all came into play this year. So you know, with with all of the big companies that um, acknowledged it and made it um, a holiday, we don't know. I don't. I'm not sure if a lot of the other companies made it paid holidays, but yeah. the big talk is making it a national holiday all the way across the board. Because as you said, it should. It is something that needs to be recognized. Oh yeah, it should have always been recognized from the dump, from the jump. As I say, it was just a program, and you just never really put one and two together. It's like, why the fuck are we celebrating their independence and buying fireworks and why and all this red, white, and blue shit? And yeah, well, <laughs> well, how are we doing that? And there's a lot of black people already saying that they're not doing it this year. Keep an eye out on the people who said that because a lot of them they be right out here shooting and popping fireworks. Oh yeah, they'll yeah, be they, like look like Joel Santana. Wrapped up in the goddamn American flag yeah. outfit and shit. Fucking. <laughs> that was a wild all outfit. The, all the food at the grocery store, all the yep. bed, all of that. You know what I mean? We the same nigga. So it'd be like, they just, in the heat of the moment, it just sounds good to some of them. But I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't have a problem with somebody celebrating both. I mean, if you want to, if you just, you've been programmed and conditioned. If you're 40 years old, you've been conditioned your whole 40 years of living here, 4th of July, just like Christmas. Thanksgiving, New Year's. If you want to keep doing that, and then you still acknowledge June, you know whatever. Right, because you can do both. Yeah, some people do Christmas and then they do Hanukkah. Some people do both. Yeah, yeah, they do, and and rightfully so. Um, America should acknowledge because now all of a sudden it's like something happened with you know with everything going on. Like all of these companies, all of a sudden was like, oh shit, they're fucking up black people out here, and now everybody wants to jump on quote unquote the bandwagon. Do you are you do you think it's a little too late or better late than never? That's a good question. A little bit of both. Uh it's better late than never. You know, it took y'all what 250 years to fucking acknowledge it. But uh yeah, it is I just think the time in it, it should have been based off of them just saying, hey, this is wrong. We should have been acknowledged. It took George Floyd and all of this shit for the people to realize that. Like that's the sad part. It took all this protesting and all of this shit for y'all. But this goes with the quarantine theme. All all together. We're all in this together. So we all in yeah. this together. I can do it. Yeah, so. So I, I personally want people to keep that same energy after the quarantine is over, if it's ever over and lifted and we're back out in society as a whole. I just want people to keep that same energy because right now it seems like it's trendy and I want people to prove to me, you know, and not that they have anything to prove to me and I'm not asking nobody to prove to me personally, but I just want to see people with the same energy afterwards because yeah, yeah. right now it's trendy. Everybody wants to support black lives and everybody wants to, you know, acknowledge Juneteenth. Like I just don't want this to stop. Yeah. Cause if it's based off momentum, it's not going to, it's not going to, not gonna mean anything come this time next year and after that. Right. After, yeah, it's gotta that's gotta have some meaning to it. It has meaning to it, but do people really acknowledge it for that? Or you just wanna like I say, this is the hot thing to do at the moment. Yeah. Because um companies are like changing things like, all right, so I guess the the guy that did the voice for um uh, what the hell is that? Family guy? Yeah, yeah, he decided to step out. Right, white guy that did it, which is crazy because I was like, damn, I didn't think that that was a white guy. But when you look back now, it's like, that's kind of fucking like, yeah, yeah. No, that's kind of like yeah, fucked up. Like yeah, Jimmy Fallon, I, I was watching Jimmy Fallon's Blackface, his Chris Rock impression. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, Silver so Silverman did it. Yeah, actually, another female white lady, she played a uh, black character. She, she also stepped down. I'm trying to remember what character it was, but a lot of these, uh, <laughs> white character, white people play these black characters. People just never pay any attention. You right, guy, you're not looking at the credits and seeing well, who does this voice. Who does? You know? 
which if you if you look at it right because and I've, I've said this years ago like fox fox uh five the 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 company itself like all of those shows like from the simpsons on the family guy all the way down they all have like walked that line of being like offensive like mm. straight up like there's been no like they never back down and now all of a sudden it's like the Simpsons are going to be like, Oh, we're going to only have people of color play people of color. So um, are they going to get rid of the black guy who owns the, the Kiki market on Simpsons? Uh, Abu? Apu? Yeah, they're going to get rid of He's not, you know what I mean? He's <laughs> Indian, you're right. And that, that yeah. was a big thing like a few years ago too. Yeah. When I was a kid, I was like, that, is he black? I didn't, it didn't translate. Yeah. They probably get rid of that too. Like everything is just over the top sensitive just to please. Anybody, and hey, this is not what he asked for, though. Right, and and to that point, that's exactly what I was about to get at. They, somebody was like, um, because it was a tweet where it said, um, real estate, uh, people are going to stop uh calling the master bedroom the master, oh, uh, and somebody, real? yeah, and somebody retweeted like, yo, all we want is just fucking police to stop beating our asses. Like y'all are doing everything other than what we're asking for. They're trying to make all of these changes all the way around. Wow. I know I I, I made a joke and said, well, so when Tiger Woods and the Bill Mickelson, they're not going to call golf the masters anymore. The masters. <laughs> exactly. I was joking with them. So they really took the master bedroom out. Yep. Now that's what they called it back then. The master house, the master's big, the bedroom. The exactly. Big bedroom. Uh, it, and so I guess my question would be, are are we going to have to change all of the lingo all the way around now? Like because yeah. certain things are 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 made this way, and we're so used to it. Not to say that it's right or wrong, but so now are we going to change our dialect all the way around? I I guess that's what they're trying to do, but it won't never. We'll always know it for what it is. But I think that the kids, the next generation, they won't have a clue. I think for them, that generation, it'll mean something, right? Like, I, we looked at the master bedroom as you know that have you yeah. ever thought of it like that yeah i never thought of it like that you know what i mean so like they 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 have this style of house called plantation style house oh, yeah, yeah i've seen that over the week i was like plantation like, yeah oh, and God. it's like it's just a style of a house but people are overly sensitive now and it's like going back to that tweet all we want is just for police to stop killing unarmed black yeah. And, and women like that's all we want like you know like y- y'all are doing everything except what needs to be done and you get all the closet races or another reason to continue to be closet races exactly this is to come out and y'all telling them to hide their flags and uh tuck their lip in and not say this and that and i'm like no i don't want to be around a bunch of closet races right like, put the motherfuckers on display the way they shape in the society is going to be a lot. You, you're not going to never deprogram that from someone, especially. I seen some lady, she's like 60 years old. That lady's, she was born in Hick, you know what I mean? Born redneck. She's like, she's going to teach her grandkids to be hateful towards black folks. That lady's been that way for 60 years. You're not going to change her mindset. Right. <laughs> I mean, just because you all of a sudden you can't do this, you can't do that. This is, and putting is, hands on her ain't going to change it anyway. Yeah, you feel better about it, but it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. But and you know, was, it's. Yeah, it was one. My bad. I just, I, I, I've been seeing too many videos of black people, and it's victimized shit. Where they'll be like, "Oh, some white man spit on me," or "This white Karen did this," or somebody. Yeah. All you do is take out a license plate tag. Some dude got spit on by a white guy in South Carolina. He said, "Oh, I know you ain't spit on me." Talked all this rah rah shit. Gets out the car. Just to say, oh, I got that license tag, though. I'm like, what that? I'm like, what? Nah, you can't spit on nobody during uh, coronavirus times. Like, that's a that's that's, that's like, um second degree murder or something. Yeah. That's a uh, attempted murder or something. Like, I don't know if you got this shit or not. Fuck that. All he got with that license tag information. I'm like, bro, fuck that license tag. You got the way he was talking. Like, you gotta go. You gotta go get out the car and do. Some you gotta put hands and feet on him. Yeah. You have to. I think about the coronavirus. I'm just thinking on principle. You spit on me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. But coronavirus is like, yeah, if, that, that that's works. that's your that's your grounds if the guy wants to press charges, which you know he's probably going to do. But be like, yo, he spit on me. I don't know if he's got the fucking disease or not. Yeah, like, mask, yeah. yeah. And so speaking to people wanting to change things, um, 
the Quaker Oats brand and PepsiCo wants to remove the Auntie Mama uh, brand and logo. Also, Uncle Ben's too. Yeah, Uncle Ben. I was like, wow, Uncle Ben too. Damn. I, right. I kind of that. This Butterworth also. What does Butterworth do? Like, <laughs> and I just know she was black. And probably they they want to. She didn't do nothing. They just want to get rid of her too. And and so it. Oh, excuse me. It, it 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 made me ask the question when everybody is changing things. Like we want to change the lingo. We want to do this. We want to do that. But I don't recall anybody ever being offended by Aunt your Mama. If they were, it was probably in the earlier days when she actually wore the scarf and they right. had phrases like mm-hmm, "Honey, these pancakes show is Yeah, good. now that shit was wild. Yeah. That yeah. shit was wild. It was like that probably up until. And this is based off this me, me, history. I wasn't around. Probably based off, it probably was like that. It, it, the product been around for 120, 30 years. Yeah, it uh, it was introduced in 1893 and portrayed by Nancy Green, a formerly enslaved woman. Yeah, so Jim Crow shit basically the start of that. So it, it, they didn't change the scarf and all of that shit. I was just saying until maybe like the 70s. Right. So that that was the image of the the brand for like the first 50, 60 years. You know, for, for our generation, they what they did, they strunk her. She wasn't fat anymore. Yeah. They had on her head. They took that fucking scarf off, and they took the catchphrases off. So to us, Aunt your Mama just looks like somebody's uh, kind of healthy grandma. Right. And, uh, we, we, you know, we didn't look at it that way. Well, yeah, I, like, I never took offense to it because here's the thing, right? We, as white people, we talk about inclusion, right? Like, we want to see our faces in, in, in TV shows and be represented so um, our kids or our grandkids or whoever can feel like I can be that person too. Now, when you get inclusion in certain things, and I, I said this back then about the, the whole uh, Black Little Mermaid thing, it's like inclusion isn't always a good thing because it's just like, all right, we gave you a Black Mermaid. You see what I'm saying? Like you gave somebody something and they're going to hold that over your head. Like we gave you this. So you yeah. should be happy with it as opposed to, I earned this. I deserve to be here. Because, yeah. I mean, they can either not put you in something at all or put you in a stereo role. Like, if you ever watch Latinos, they only get gangster roles, sexy sexy Latina role, uh, Mexican cartel shit, or they, they're they cutting somebody's grass. That's the only roles they get on television, really. Yep. And we always, at the beginning of those times, Black people either was somebody's maid, uh, somebody's butler, you know, those type of house Negro type of, and that's why a lot of black folks didn't even watch that shit. They just watched, they'd rather watch John Wayne and the white people than watch their own people doing some shucking and jiving shit. It was easier to watch Clint Eastwood than to watch Mammy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of black folks, that's why they would rather watch the white people than to watch themselves be degraded for entertainment. But right. and you know, I, with changing answer, my man ain't gonna change nothing though. No, it isn't because so the the relatives of the woman, so the woman that was on the, the recent bottle, her name was uh, Lillian Richard. Now, her relatives are not in support of the rebranding because if they rebranded, that means that whatever little bit of royalties they were given to the family for this woman will be diminished. Now, um, Lillian Richard was recruited to work for Quaker Oats in the 1920s. Now, in the 1920s, there was no jobs for black people, especially black women. So for that's like almost breaking a color barrier. Like <laughs> it might've been, it might've been like you, you got to play the, the shucking and driving or she might've not had to do any shucking and driving, but for a time where they weren't hiring black people and for this woman to stand up and be like, yo, I, I'll, I'll take this job. Like, let me be the brand because maybe she had the foresight of inclusion. Maybe if my people see me, they'll 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 want to get into this type of thing. Or this is the the opening doors for black people, black and brown people, people of color to be um, in the in media. You know, the yeah. earlier days of media. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and her her family ain't happy about it, and I I, I feel them. Like, Man, that, that check and checks is about to be dead. Yeah, I'm sure those were nice checks too. Yeah, and they've been living off that for the last, I didn't know that was that long, 1920s, yeah. 
Yeah, I when I when I read it too, I was like, God, I thought it was. I was like, hold up, 18, 1893, when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. That's when they came out with goddamn syrup. Coincidentally, huh? Hmm. Yeah. But the the funny part too is, you know, I people are people are in an uproar about the fact that they're removing this woman or this this logo, but nobody's upset at the fact that it's not real syrup. Like, yeah, but that, that, that too. But I should. We should be more upset that they had a black woman as a cover of this pancake franchise or whatever you want to call it for all these years and didn't own any of the shit. Yeah, didn't own the name, didn't own the nothing. That she was an employee. The first lady was a former slave who worked for God knows how much the wages were, and then this lady, you know, they they, they paid her. She was an employee. And it's right. like, I can see if it was a, a fictional character, like Mr. Clean, you know, yep. this a real character. Like, you, this, this should, it should have been a black brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, unfortunately, it, it wasn't. I I just found it beyond me. I'm like, uh, y'all know this isn't real syrup, right? Like, and I'm not big on, like, sugars like that. So it didn't really bother me. I was like, you know, I whatever. I didn't care. But when I saw people being um up in arms because nobody was really looking at the surface they were like oh they're removing the face and some people were like yeah because it has um racial undertones and it was based off of this character and so that we know but there was people a family actually lived off of this and now they're they're going to take away from this family yeah they, they fought yeah america so, um, lynchings in 2020 are back. Yeah, that's what's scary. Yep. So, in less than one month, six black people have been found hanging from trees. So, this has happened in California, Georgia, New York, Oregon, and Texas. New now, York surprises me. Yeah, that's the one that surprised surprised me too. I'm like, all right, all these Oregon, other states, I'm like, yeah, California, Georgia, though? Oh, boy. Huh? Yeah, Georgia is the good old boys network. California, yeah, I was a little. Because like, yeah. California is one of the more liberal states. I yeah. would, I was under the aware because it's like one of the last um, territories to be formed as a state. You know, they had to make their way out west, and so by the time they got out there, the rules are different, and everybody. So I'm like, what the what the hell? But they're trying to cover this up as, as saying that these, yeah, suicides like. So it was all six black men just happening to rest by one by one. Just oh, I'm just going hey, by a tree, right? Y'all mm. know I'm serious about race relations. Just call it what it is. Do investigate that shit. Yeah, it, because you're you're not going to tell me that if if a black person decides to commit suicide because studies have shown like we black people don't commit suicide as much as white people, but mm. it does happen. You know, yeah. I'm not I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but we're not going to kill ourselves in the fashion of what y'all used to do to make y'all, y'all made like public events out of it. Yeah, a, a picnic. So, you know what I'm saying? They call it a picnic. So yeah, pick a nigga. They put a paper and put a flyer out there after church. Yeah, after church on Sunday. That's crazy, oh. too. So you go praise the Lord and all of that yeah. stuff. And then you come out here and commit. A public murder. Yeah, public perjury. Yeah, basically. And fucking, I seen some video, uh, it's a picture, I think, I don't know, it was Connecticut, where somebody took a bunch of these uh, black people who've been killed by cops. They put them on pictures and they hung them by trees and they got them by like ropes and they got pictures of like T. I. Breonna Taylor, Eric Gardner, Mike Brown, George Floyd. They got all of their pictures hanging from these nooses. Mm. Uh, and they had to take it down and shit. So I was like, they're, they're starting to fight back now. Like the good old boys, you know what I mean? Trump's yeah. starting, they starting to feel like, okay, now we got to stand up against this. this they, they're losing, they feel like they're losing good old America. Yeah, that, that's what they feel like. And I mean, people are, people are on edge right now and they, we don't really trust the police, never have. But now more than ever, people of color aren't trusting the police. And so the family of the deceased um, the protesters and activists um, disagree because they're like, yo, it's 
how ironic that these things are happening in the time of nationwide racial upheaval. Like mm-hmm. all of this, you know, black renaissance, uh, revolution, whatever you want to call it is going on. And now all of a sudden you guys are lynching people again and then claiming that it's suicide. 1935 shit. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, yeah, we were in some dark times, man. Mm-hmm. Now, I know what you're going to segue into. You know it. Bubba Wallace. This nigga name is Bubba. Let's just take a moment of silence. That's his real name, y'all. Bubba Wallace. Bub. Oh, my God. The half a Negro. Hashtag, come on, Bubba. Yeah. So, Hashtag Bubba Wallace is the, the the only, I guess, black NASCAR racer. NASCAR. NASCAR. And so, so basically, a noose was found in his racing stall. Yeah, like and, the, the garage, yeah. Yeah, garage. and so... But this comes two weeks after NASCAR uh, banned Confederate flags being flown at events. And being that Bubba Wallace, um, he pressed for that policy change. People are saying that this happened to his stall because of that. But when I did a video on it and then, you know, people reported back to me and they told me, oh, um, the news... Or quote unquote, the noose was found or has been in that garage stall since 2019. And they said that it's not a noose to be hung, but basically to open the garage door. But it's a noose. A noose is a form of knot. Like, you know, they got all these different types of knots out there that you can tie. I don't know. I'm not a Boy Scout scout. So, but a noose is a form of a knot. And it's like, why would that be? And, and you mean to tell me, so since 2019, people have seen this and nobody said anything. Now, all of a sudden, NASCAR bans Confederate flags. And it's like, I think so, it was it was what it was that you're talking about, the, the garage thing. Yeah. So do you think do you think that Bubba Wallace is just riding this whole racial tone out now? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bubba. I'm about to start calling him. Uh, now they calling him uh, Bubba some late. Juicy some late, some late. Look, man. So I, I think that's a um, because when you say in the ironic, the the the, the, co- the coincidences in this shit. So it's right after the NASCAR Confederate flag thing, and it's right maybe a couple weeks after these nooses, uh, these hangings, these lynchings started popping up. So is it a coincidence again? After a couple of guys in Cali and Georgia got hung, now all of a sudden, like on TV. Bubba Wallace, noose found in Bubba Wallace's locker. I mean, it's the garage. He's crying. Yeah. He was crying. He did all his promo, did, did every did ESPN first take. He did all his interviews. Then the corniest shit, and I posted it on my IG story. I don't know if you've seen it, where they, they showed the track and everyone came together in unity. And they were playing yeah. music on Fox. And all of the racers got out of their cars and they walked alongside of his car. Fuck the race, I guess. Was going weird. This is before the race. Everyone hold uh, no for no social distancing. Every it's like fifty motherfuckers out there. All oh, he's the one black NASCAR driver, and everybody's came together for Bubba Wallace, and they did this and solidarity. And I like that shit was a PR moment for NASCAR. NASCAR yep. changed their image. That was not a bad. That was a, that was a stunt, and I hate to say it, and I might come off wrong, but when I biracial you gotta and i'm not it's nothing against biracial people you have nothing to, you have no control over your uh ethnicity but um i kind of my tenants go up with some biracial people i don't automatically think of someone's biracial and they look like me that they have the same racial viewpoints as me you might have grew up completely different but wallace might have grew up with his white family for all i know mm-hmm. also um, shit. you know jesse some is is another biracial one he was trying to split an agenda with you know gays Gay blacks and gay straight. So you somebody said him. Jesse put that noose in his garage. <laughs> he probably did. Yeah. So take, take I forgot the, about Jesse in the noose. Take the noose. Take the heat off Jesse and head yeah. it and put it on Bubba. I was That's like, insane. Yeah, I'm like, come on. Like I said, it would be another biracial dude. The same setup as Jesse. Because when I first reported, I said, I don't know, y'all. It's kind of Jesse some layers, kind of. But I, I didn't want to be that guy. But yeah, it's, it's starting to look like that because. Forced. It was like, come on, a NASCAR. Right, because so 
remember when NASCAR said, all right, we're not uh, letting Confederate flags being flown. And I was like starting to be like, um, why? Like NASCAR never really fuck with black people. It's not like black people are going to be tailgating at NASCAR anyway. You have one fucking person, black right. person, biracial on top of that. But That's then, all- but then my cousin, he said, uh, well, NASCAR doesn't really have a dog in a race when it comes to, cause I was like, is it black lives marketing? Right. And he was saying that they don't really have a dog in the race because their audience isn't really black people. And I was like, oh, shit, you might be on to something. I was like, so maybe they are just trying to be like, look, I know we got the history, but we ain't really with that shit. All right, whatever, whatever. But now when you got the noose, it's all starting to look like a play. Like what's going on? Like Bubba is trying to ride this fame out to the point that, you know, he's on there crying and um, the people pushed his car. It's like... if I was a NASCAR uh, fan, I'd have been mad. I'd have been like, look, yo, come on, man. Like, All of the fans, a lot of them have quit. And that's one thing I say about NASCAR. It's a good old boys network, good old boy entertainment, but they're the good old boys. They 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 they, they don't fuck with you, but they leave, they're like, leave us to ourselves. We yeah. leave y'all alone. We leave y'all alone. Let fly your little fucking flags for all I care. That to me got overshadowed because even though they banned that flag when they did that race, it was somebody with a big helicopter still flying that motherfucker across, and people were still pulling up to the. Yeah, so what are you really gonna? What are you gonna right. do? You're right, right. Somebody, are you gonna tell a cop to go out there and tell everybody to take their flag now? Like never bothered. I don't, I don't watch NASCAR to be offended to see a, a Confederate flag. Right. You couldn't. Can, you couldn't offend me if you wanted to. I don't watch your program. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I that's watch. It. You know. That's- I, that's it too. And like I told everybody, I'm gonna keep my eye on this because I'm like, yo, this is all seems a little suspect here. Oh but, shit. I'm 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 over it. I'm all right, Bubba. You lied, you know. <laughs> yeah, Bubba. Uh, poor act, Bubba. I guess. I just wasn't buying it. I lied because I didn't know who the fuck Bubba Wallace was before two, three weeks ago. So do you do you think Bubba um this is gonna be uh call him Mr. Wallace? Yeah, Mr. Wallace, you think Mr. Wallace, this is a um, a launch pad for like something bigger? Like, do you think he's going to come out in a couple of weeks trying to maybe do acting or like sell a, a product or something? I could see him in a Tyler Perry movie or something. He's, he's good at crying. He's light skinned. He's good at crying. Tyler I Perry see- like light skinned Negroes too. Light skinned niggas that can cry. Yeah. Yeah. I can see him doing something like that. But I mean, he just, I don't know. Some people are going to buy it, some people are not. I mean, you're really, it's like 50-50 split. I mean, some people are going to sell it. We stand with, I hashtag stand with Bubba Wallace. You know, I just, I'm I good. <laughs> I'm good on that one. So, um, so the next, the next one, um, since we we're talking about sports, the big topic that's been going on the past, like, week or so, is should the NBA return? Are you you a fan of basketball? Oh yeah, hell yeah. Uh, I, I, me personally, I don't really care about basketball. Um, I find it funny that you know, it's it's almost like same thing with football. It's like the slave trade all over again. You know, they bring the guy up on stage. Hey, look who we just signed. He's gonna he's gonna play for our team. He's gonna modern day minstrel show. Right, and it's like basketball. If you ask me, it's the dumbest sport ever because you're just running up and down the court, chasing behind the fucking ball, shooting it in the net, every up and down. And maybe because, huh? I respect the yeah, the logic. I respect it. Yeah. I mean, and and people like it. And like this dude at my job, he got so pissed off. He's like, "Nah, come on, eh, you supposed to like, nah, it ain't that serious." And I was like, "Yo, I'm just joking, dude. Like, I don't (laughs) give a damn. Like, you know, good for these guys." Um, but. So the NBA is talking about returning. Um, I guess they're trying to move everybody down to Orlando, Florida, where Florida just had like this huge spike in Corona yeah. cases. So it's like they're trying to make everybody quarantine in Orlando and then they're going to play the game without uh, fans. And some people are, and some people are like, um, yo, bring the NBA back. Like it's, you know, uh, these people have jobs, and and most of it is like fans who are like just they ain't got shit else to do, That's all it is. right? And I'm like, no, like leave, let that shit go. Because what 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 was old boy the first one that said, um, let's not take us, Stephen Jackson, right? Yeah, Stephen Jackson and Kyrie Irving. Yeah, they were like, yo, let's not take our eye off the ball. This is this can be a distraction. Oh and, yeah. 
as much as sometimes I agree with uh, Charlemagne, I know you don't like Charlemagne, but as much as I don't um, disagree with him on certain things, I had to disagree with him on this one because he's like, um, he's like, no, these these players they can still use their voice and their platform as if the NBA can't silence these motherfuckers if they want to. If the thing, problem with that is then it's infiltrated because I already I knew the, the the third eye is open. The problem with that is it's infiltrated and now it's corporate. It's not a black protest anymore. They're already talking about putting victims' names of police brutality on the back of their jerseys and replacing their names. So instead of LeBron, instead of saying James 23, it'll say like Breonna Taylor, George right. Floyd. Yeah, so it's like you're infiltrating the the, the so-called protest anyway. And it's just, I, nah. And but on top of that, it's a fucking pandemic. Yep. I mean, personally, after going, when, it, when they first canceled the NBA, that was when I took the pandemic serious. But after the months, I mean, I was like, okay, we can live without this shit. It's not as bad as we thought it was going to be without basketball. Right. Now, football is a different thing. I might, you might have to tie me to a, a fucking uh, straight jacket if there's no football comes to the But I, I, and my team is good. And I'm like, bro, I can, I can wait till 2021. I'm good. Like, I don't, I don't, if you're still stuck on basketball, especially if you're black and with all this shit we've been going through, like, that's not even, that should be like the fifth or sixth thing on your mind. All right. this shit going on. We got the election coming up. This we in a pandemic, health crisis, economies getting crazy, and y'all niggas worried about ball because they want something to take their focus on reality. Right. Wow. But that's that's where the whole distraction comes in. Everybody thinks that it's just the focus on uh, social injustice. It's like no, we got the election, like you said. We got fucking of- health <laughs> issues. People ain't got jobs and. Yeah. A lot of players have went down there already for practice and training camp, and they already got sick. So now they're having to sign on top of a few players that don't want to come, that don't want to risk the you know, corona shit. You had like 16 different guys have already tested positive. And then um, certain players, they, they're having to sign guys from the streets to fill in these spots. Now what happens if the big stars start getting corona? If LeBron gets it, are you going to cancel it then? You know, because if LeBron gets it, that's it. It's only yeah. a Two weeks, the biggest star is out, and it, and it's not a full a full season, right? So it won't no, even July thirtieth to like September. Uh, you'll be seeing the NBA finals in September. It's going to overlap with football. I, it, it, even football, they're talking about shortening the season. They already canceled the preseason game. Some of the you got big stars that got coronavirus. All it takes is for the right star to to get it, and that's it. And yeah. Big time players that sell tickets that people want to see, and they can't watch them. And every day I watch these second, third rate guys. Just bring it back next year, bro. Yeah, I mean, that's my take on the year in general. Anything that has to do with the year, just let let's 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 regroup next year. Like mm-hmm. right now, it's a lot going on, and I understand, you know, these NBA players and these athletes in general they all have jobs and you know they have families and all of this stuff but at the same time you're talking about risking your health you know like we these are the same people who were saying oh you guys need to stay at home so we can all go back to work like some people are lucky enough to work from home some of these players are lucky enough to where as though they've made money they have endorsements they you know they're good they don't really need to go back to work and then you have some that have to go back to work because they live paycheck to paycheck. Oh, yeah. But the the reality of it is, it is a distraction. And I don't care what anybody says because, like you said, it's it'll it'll become corporate if they if they go back and they try to start making these um messages on quote unquote the platforms, oh, and yeah. and then um like what do you think the 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 white man isn't the white man that runs basketball is going to be like all right come on now you guys are taking away from the yeah. the actual money maker here because who the hell's going to who's who's going to endorse anything cuz i mean think about it in regular time nba would have did the playoffs would have started in april then may would have kicked up and then june so all of these protests that you've seen for the last month and a half do you think they would have been going on if niggas could watch sunday afternoon playoff games nope Niggas would have been in the streets 2,000 deep if LeBron and the Lakers were going against Kawhi and the Clippers on a Sunday. Nope. In the East, in the Western Conference Finals, you know, a lot of us would not be out there. Maybe some, but not in big numbers. Yeah, so, it wouldn't be as, as big, and, and we wouldn't have the impact that we have, we have as a people. Out there, particularly. Right, 
when you think about a riot or a protest, usually it's the youth that runs that whole thing. But if mm-hmm. the youth are distracted by the greatest uh, form of entertainment, then what the fuck? So, right. nah, I, I don't think they should bring that shit back to next year. And I would, I'm a diehard fan. My team's in the playoffs and all that. But I'm like, bro, even this shit is so bogus. Whoever wins this shit, it's not going to count. It ain't going to count anyway. They put an asterisk by it, like, okay, that season wasn't shit. Then. Trash. Yeah. Just, just throw the whole year away. Put it in rice or something. So, um, all right. So let's close out on a um, on another note. Um, so Young Buck is broke. I don't even know how to like transition into it, other than you know people do got to go to work. But Young Buck is broke, and this hurt my heart. This hurt my heart because not too long ago, I was just on here defending Young Buck, being like, "Nah, you know that's Buck. Whatever, whatever. I don't care about the personal issues. Like the music is great." But here we are. So Young Buck went on IG Live explaining to people that he's broke. I guess, you know, the IRS is on his heels again. Um, this isn't, which isn't the first time that he's had troubles with the IRS. Remember, uh, what was it, 2009 when 50 Cent recorded the phone conversation of Buck crying? Yeah. Which, yeah. I think Buck is just a guy who's just been taken care of by so many people. He's been enabled by, there's always been someone that took care of him, rather it was 50, juvenile back in the day, somebody. Mm-hmm. He's just relying on people to get him out of his bullshit. You know, so when he put that video out talking about donate a buck for buck, and I'm like, hold up, nigga, that's just go for me, cash app. And then he, and right. people in the comments are like, hold up, where this money going? He talking about, he come up with you just knowing someone's lying. They just a bullshit. And yeah. Bullshit. All right. Hold on. Let's let's get to that in a second. But so the thing, all right, donate a buck for buck. He basically said, yo, I'm broke. I'm living off my girl. I got like a hundred dollars to my name, a hundred dollars in clothes. <laughs> Timeline before that, he was faking. I'm telling you, before that, he was faking it and, and had the nerve to say it was for a charity. Oh, so that was beforehand? That's the one I'm talking about. That's what I did a video on. He tried to front and say that it was going to families in need and a midlife crisis. I'm like, right, I was a family in a midlife crisis. And I'm like, boy. And then the fans blew him up and said, no, nigga, that's going to you. Then that's when he came out and said what you just said. Okay, so so I got it backwards. Yeah, then okay. he told the truth after people called him out on his bullshit. Because in my video, what I like, my theory was the reason he. So, all right, let's just hypothetically, let's say the way that it happened was backwards, the way I had it, the buck for buck and then the go, um, then the nonprofit. Because I was like, you know, this guy has had troubles with the IRS. And if you had troubles with the IRS, what's one of the easiest ways to avoid paying taxes? create a nonprofit, you know, and that is usually how to avoid. So I thought that's what he was doing. Cause I'm like, hold up, you're creating it for families in need, but you just told everybody you were in need. He ain't so that <laughs> he ain't that smart. He had a restaurant at one point. He should have kept that on, but he's not that smart. Everyone know Buck gonna smoke that money up. If you really think if he was if he was doing it, if he was gonna put it out there and just say, hey y'all, I'm in debt with the IRS. But the truth is it's not even just them. It's like child support. Yeah, it's studio time. He's got to pay fifty back. It's a lot of things, but I'm like, I don't. I think he's just really pocketing that bread. I don't think he's really using that and paying back any of his. There's nothing. No, no shame in saying, "Hey, can y'all help me raise this money so I can pay back this?" Right. But it's just putting it in your pocket and probably supporting your habit. And that I'm like, come on, game gave him a thousand dollars. Yeah, I, yeah, game gave him a rack, which you know, some people. Me, I'd have been like, "What the fuck is a thousand dollars?" Like, yeah, you get too, I mean, like, you said donate a buck for buck, man. Right? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And because he was like, you know, I got close to a million fans, so if everybody gave buck a buck, just blah, 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 blah. I don't know, man. It's it's just humbling because this is a dude at one point used to walk around with eighty thousand dollars in his mouth. He had yeah, a grill. Yeah, and that that's the that's the real um, lesson here, I guess, is you know. Because a lot of rappers do be on IG front and like they got it like that. Mm-hmm. And we know, and you know, we know that some of them don't, but we can't tell who's who from the real, from the fake. And like you pointed out um, episodes ago that how are some of these rappers going to survive this pandemic? Because a lot of them, you know, they can't get out on, on the road. They can't, you know, do these walkthroughs. And Buck is still in contact 
contract with 50, which is why he can't release any music. So he put out mixtapes and they're pretty dope, but um, you can't go and do no fucking shows and, right. and, and, and perform this, this, this music. Right. You can't do that right now. I mean, some people are, you know, but you can't really, it's no more. And right now with that whole other thing over his head, uh, his credibility's taking a hit also. So he's kind of just in the corner, strapped down and, <laughs> he just, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a lot. Of yeah, it just, is, man. No one embarrasses themselves more than Young Buck and Ja Rule. Damn, yeah, that's right. Ja Rule, ja Rule turned just, into ja Rule laughing Murphy. stock. Yeah, I heard that was for like a TV show. I heard it was just for a commercial for a place in Jersey by your neck of the woods next to the Gyro spot. And uh, Ja Rule was just, he got paid to do a commercial. He got paid the second job. The, yeah. The dude sold his whole catalog for two million. You know that? No. Yeah. So he don't own none of his shit. And wow. Went to cover debt. So I mean, that Ja Rule, that was sad too. I mean, I probably would have laughed at that a year ago, but now I'm like, that was just. Yeah. When you see what people got to do to pay the bills, it's kind of it's humbling. Out the names. Of the food. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's Greek food. You really yeah. like. At least say yo, Jai. This is how you say it. I'm pretty shit. sure Ti couldn't fucking pronounce half that shit. Now, nah, but they could at least say yo, Jai. This is how you say this. Don't, don't, don't they, they, they? It looked like a bad George Sink commercial. Not George Sink. Uh, JG Wentworth. One of the parody commercials. Yeah, yeah. Come Which, on. Man. But you know, the crazy part is that company's stock had boomed, and, and the company's out of California. Everybody thought it was Jersey, but there, oh. it's a California uh, business. Yeah. Sure. Not getting any of that though. As long as they, he just oh, nah. commercial and just say, okay, I'm sure. I'm sure he got like whatever his like appearance fee is, and yeah. that was that because, like they, I mean, all publicity is good publicity apparently because that was a horrible commercial, but it went viral on social media and everybody like you know I was, shit. Now I got to go see what this place is about. Yeah. Like, let me get that thing that Ja Rule said he liked that he can't pronounce. Like, yeah, you better be a black company, a soul food spot, a food black spot. It would have been a good look, but come on, man. Right. Well, see, that's the problem. So if it was a black company, he did it like that. We would nah, people not were, that, that. It was still too coonish. It was still too right too crowish to me. But it was, you know, there was a, they could have had Jai eating watermelons and drinking grape soda for all I fucking know. Yikes! It was, <laughs> it was a bunch, man. So I don't know who had a word, Young Bug or Jai Rule, but put Damn. that on. Who, who was who? Job Buck. Uh, right. Oh shit! There's a fucking Black Lives Matter protest going right by the house right now. Wow! Get out there and join the people, man. Nah, social distancing. Like the powers that be. I'm That's pretty cool. Beat shit with the bullhorn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that's our episode this week. Um, sure. Another good one in the books. Uh, yeah. And um, I appreciate you. Happy uh, belated Juneteenth, brother. And um, yeah, you guys tune in, you know, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe, share, um, pass this along. Any links, you know, to your friends, you know, you like the episode, please, you know, and, and don't be afraid to let us know. Uh, certain things you would prefer us to cover as well, because um, right now it's a lot of racial tensions going on. So that's like kind of the focus. But if there's anything, you know, um, a local story or something you want us to look into, don't be afraid to hit us up. Our social medias are in the descriptions and uh, all that flashy. You got anything you want to leave the people on? Oh, no, like social media description. Yeah, let us get feedback. Let us know what y'all want us to talk about and shit like that. And um, hit my channel, like Frankie Diamonds TV. Also subscribe to this channel. Word. All right, so looks like another one in the books. We'll oh, see y'all next week. Frankie, enjoy yourself. It's good talking to you. Stay safe out there, and I'll be in touch. All right, bro. Peace out.